The only object still admissible in this debate is the quickest and safest exit for our people there. But you, and soon, Mr. Bush, it will be you and you alone, still insist otherwise. And our sons and daughters and fathers and mothers will be sacrificed there tonight, sir, so that you can say you did not lose in Iraq. So are the relationships that we establish with the Iraqi people. Uh, we do indeed uh, underscore the importance of relationships. We often note in places like the Counterinsurgency Center when I speak there or elsewhere, uh, the huge importance of establishing relations that become so strong that at the end of the day, if all of your other logic fails, you can say, please just do it for me. Just do it because I am asking, your Siddiqui, your friend, your Habibi, your, uh, your, 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 your Ahuya, your brother, whatever. Uh, and, and that's important. Your citizens, the people for whom you work, have told you they do not want this. And moreover, they do not want you to do this. Now, you have to remember that if you reach that point in a relationship with your Iraqi brother, that he can then turn around and ask the same thing of you. Uh, and you must then endeavor uh, to say yes as well. You instead used our troops as political pawns, then blamed the Democrats when you did so. Not but uh, relationships are what this is all about. I think in truth, relationships are what everything is all about, uh, whether it's our own home life or uh, international relations. And uh, all we're trying to do is, you know, sort of one handshake at a time or one smile at a time. Uh, one beanie baby at a time uh, to add a little bit of strength to those relationships. But ultimately meaningless phrase, the war on terror. We have begun looking at alternative futures for beyond July to see what could the timing and pace of possible future reductions be. But uh, President Bush may not be very good at reality, but he and Mr. Cheney and Mr. Robe are still gifted at letting American troops be killed and then turning their deaths to their own political advantage. Also, Sean, please make sure that the American public knows that these soldiers have not been duped. We know exactly what we were getting ourselves into when we came to the military, and we have a much more intellectual, smarter force today. These are soldiers who think on their feet. They have a lot more responsibility than the average American. When you say that this is not sacrifice, this has now become human sacrifice. Please, the, the, bottom these people. Line, oh, go ahead, man. Bottom line is, is that we hear what, what's being said in the media back home. But we're here and we see a whole different side of what's happening. Explain that. What's the Your most respected generals see no value in a surge. They could not possibly see it in this madness of sacrifice. Well, again, let me just say that this is a team effort. We've talked about this before, that this is the new greatest generation of American soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and civilians who are out here in huge numbers as well. Uh, they have tremendous responsibility, they not do. only war fighting, but to see that the utilities get connected, to mm -hmm. fund projects. They handle, you know, fiscal responsibility. They mediate between the various, uh, you know, sects. Our policy in Iraq has been criticized for being indescribable, for being inscrutable, for being ineffable. It's a time issue. The American public, or whoever says you can't win the war, they can't win the war at the time that they want. If anything's given enough time to get it done right, you need to do it thorough and you need to do it well. So well see, America has kind of turned so into it, the instant gratification. Yeah, that's true. Everybody wants they, an easy they, answer. They want it right then, right now, on their fingertips. A and B. Exactly. Right, I want to ask you all a Mr. Bush, your judgment about Iraq, and now about sacrifice, is at variance with your peoples, to the point of delusion. I mean, I think most of us look at it this is this is not a job. In any way, shape, or form, this is not a job. This is a lifestyle. And we choose this life type of lifestyle. Knowing the danger. Yeah. Wasn't that the definition of bravery and sacrifice? Mm -hmm. And you do it because why? Because I want my children and everybody else that lives in America to have the same freedoms that I have. And, and that's my, what my our fathers had. That's what our fathers did, isn't it? When my father signed up after Pearl Harbor, that's sort of what, you know, they sort of gave us the gift. We're just passing it on. Right? This is palpable nonsense, Mr. Bush. No, it's really it is tough and I, I think, These kids are doing an outstanding job. I was thinking right. about all of you, and I've had conversations, and you guys are here. This country has already lost in Iraq, sir.
Right. So we can win, but the politicians can lose it. It's the sergeants and the lieutenants that are here fighting that are going to win this thing. We won every single war. In Vietnam. The politicians pulled us out. Your policy in Iraq has already had its crushing impact on our safety here. You have already fomented new terrorism and new terrorists. You know what's really interesting about this? Is that they keep saying we can, but they've not defined what win is. Give us a definition of what win is. Give us the soldiers to watch exactly. I think the president gave a pretty good definition of win. You have insisted, Mr. Bush, that we must not lose in Iraq, that if we don't fight them there, we will fight them here, as if the corollary were somehow that if by fighting them there, we will not have to fight them here. And yet you have remade our country and not remade it for the good. Guard that said, you know, the misspell, but these soldiers, that, that's, that's an insult. It's an absolute insult to sit there and say to these young men and women and the leaders and the commanders in the first army sergeant majors and the privates that, you know what? If you don't do this, then this is, that, that's totally an insult and the wrong answer. Especially very, very you. educated. Some of the highly, most highly educated people so, in the first day. So then here's the question. To keep as many troops there as long as he can keep them there. Because that's what this is all about, is it not, Mr. Bush? That is what this sacrifice has been for, to continue this senseless war. You have dressed it up in the clothing, first of a hunt for weapons of mass destruction, then of liberation, then of regional imperative, then of oil prices, and now in these new terms of sacrifice. It's like a damned game of color forms, isn't it, sir? With every congressional delegation and with the press, I have tried not to pull punches. Uh, I base my assessments, uh, what I offer, uh, on personal observation, uh, walking around Baghdad, driving around it, uh, flying around it. Uh, the fact is that there are signs of normalcy throughout a good bit of Baghdad. Uh, there are ten... Even if the only safety to be found is in getting them the hell out of there. We flew around the city on the way over here today. Uh, since they'd lifted the curfew just to see how things were going. There's traffic all over the streets, the markets are reopened, and so forth. That is not to say, and in fact, in that interview, I followed and also warned, for example, that the mosque bombing could spark new violence. Uh, I have tried hard to present both the good and the bad. Uh, you instead used our troops as political pawns, then blamed the Democrats when you did so. Not but I will not shrink from announcing that there is some good out there, if you will, that there is some normalcy, uh, nor will I shrink from acknowledging that there is plenty of bad out there, as I did with the fact that we have to really focus on 30 percent of those Baghdad neighborhoods, and there's certainly not much normalcy in some of those neighborhoods which are under the threat of both al-Qaeda and then uh, extremist militias. So, how so, who among us will stop this war? this war of lies to it brings me satisfaction and to see the Iraqis they have a big smile on their face every time we come by they flag down patrols and they they know that we're here to help them and I just feel that I've been a big importance to, on their part the Democratic leadership has agreed to finance the deaths of Americans in a war that has only reduced the security of Americans the, uh, the fact is that as we go on the offensive, uh, the enemy is going to respond. Uh, that is what has happened. Uh, car bombs uh, have been coming steadily down. Uh, and as I mentioned, sectarian executions in Baghdad in particular uh, have come down. Senate Majority Leader. Our collective will as the citizens of this country that this brazen war of lies be ended as rapidly and safely as possible. If, if we do manage to succeed here, uh, you're going to see, I believe Iraq, people are pretty hard working. Mr. Bush, our presence in Iraq must end. Do you feel that we can still win in Iraq, that we can leave behind a stable, democratic government? Chris, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here. Uh, I wouldn't be uh, leading the finest of uh, young American men and women uh, who are putting their lives on the line every day. Consider the dead who have piled up on the battlefield in these last 500 days. Uh, in the last two weeks, I've gone to memorial ceremonies, one of which was for four soldiers lost in one unit, another for six soldiers lost in one unit. And I can tell you that as you sit there at that, you obviously reflect on that particular question. War today, war tomorrow, war forever. And again, I think that there is a good prospect for progress uh, in the months ahead that hopefully can be matched by progress uh, in the political and economic arenas here in Iraq.
and again can give us hope for the way ahead. We're in over 160 countries, the U.S. military is. We're not pulling out of here anytime soon. Because of their age. And you're here. I'm, I'm here. You know what? I don't mind being here. That's what I got to do. What? But I still, it's hard on these kids. Well, their families. Is hard. I'm older than some, than most of these kids. Okay, I'm 50 years it's old. Older, better looking. I'm smarter. <laughs> oh, oh, those kids are leaving these babies. It's tough. It's tough on the families. Look, I'm here for. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now. Now, th this is an old um, uh, adage, but we love our country. It's that simple. We love our country. Uncle Sam wants you, the United States Army. All right, now. Everybody say happy holidays. I'll see y'all later. Bye.